Hello, how's it going? This is PN from Extraordinary Imaging. So today I want to talk about two lenses in particular. One is the Sigma 20mm f1.4 art and the other is the Nikon 20, 20mm f1.8 G. So I actually own both of these lenses and I've been using the Sigma version for about a year now to do my ast most of my astro images and I've come to know this lens pretty well. I love it a lot. It's extremely sharp, uh, very bright, you know, f1.4. And it's overall, over the past year, it's been my favorite lens. But very recently, I've swapped to the Nikon 20mm f1.8 G, um, which I'm filming with, by the way. Not for any particular reason uh, other than I wanted to try out the difference between a Nikon glass and a Sigma glass of the same focal length. So last night I went out to the back of um, my house. This is a bit of a swamp area back there. And I did a couple of just simple undesirable shots. So I'm going to have a look at the test results, the shot results at the moment. And we'll do a very quick comparison. So mind you, I live in a suburban area. So there's a lot of light pollution. There's going to be a lot of red cast to the images due to the sodium vapor lamps in the air. So anyway, I'll put this aside. Let's have a look at the images. So right here, okay, on the left, we have the Nikon images. And on the right, we have the Sigma. Right, so both of these are shot at f1.8, uh, ISO 800 at 4 seconds. Right, so I'm going to zoom into the corners and just have a quick look at the images and then I'll give you my thoughts on it. Okay, so on the left as we see that's the Nikon image, on the right we see the Sigma. Immediately the first thing I notice is the huge amount of vignette on the Nikon side of it. And the Sigma is much, much brighter. But if you look closely at the stars themselves, uh, the Nikon ones, although both of them do produce some coma, for some reason the Nikon, the stars on the Nikon uh, side is much more sharp, pinpoint and still circular. Whereas the Sigma side, you can see the stars are starting to get elongated towards the edges itself. So that's um i put it due um, to the, the massive front element of the Sigma lens. Uh, it's very, very curved in nature. Uh, it gives, and you probably get some field curvature issues towards the end, towards the corners of the lens. Um, but as you can see, it is much, much darker on the Nikon side. Um, a huge amount of vignette, uh, about you know two stops of light loss towards the edges. So if I'm going to compare it to the Sigma again, but at f1.4, the Nikon at f1.8 still produces significantly more vignetting than the Sigma version. Um, and you know, you have to live with, it, live with it if you want to use the Nikon. Another thing I notice immediately is that the comparable f1.8, the Sigma lens is, the Sigma lens, it's much brighter, it's got a significantly higher light transmission. Um, it's, I, I estimate it's about two thirds of a stop or so that the Sigma lens is actually transmitting more light through uh, the glass element. This is very, very weird because the Sigma contains more glass elements in the lens itself. Um, and, you know, you, you should expect to have less light transmission with, the, with more glass elements in the lens. Sigma is a very incredible manufacturing division uh, and they go to a lot of R&D for their lenses. And they just make great glass. So something else I noticed is that the actual focal length of the Sigma is not really 20 millimeters, more like 21 or 22. So if you look at, so now this image on the left, on the right here, that's a, that's a Nikon. 
and if I swap over to the Sigma, it's very slightly cropped in. So you do lose a bit of view to view on the edges itself. It's nothing to, you know, uh, it's no real big issue, no real big problem, but it is there. So the Sigma itself is about 21 or 22 millimeters rather than uh, the advertised 20. But then again, you know, if you put it down, you get f1.4. And at f1.4, the, the image, the center, is equally as sharp as the Nikon. It's much brighter, and it produces a slightly more saturated colors. Whereas the Nikon side produces way more contrasty images, um, but for some, some reason just doesn't look as saturated. It's a bit surprising given that uh, Nikon uses the nano crystal coating, which I've quite which I've used before and I do like it a lot. So if you have a comparison to um, like f4 for instance on both lenses, okay, look at the corner stars, uh, the sun stars at the corner. Nikon produces way more pleasing looking sun stars than the Sigma itself. Sigma is a bit more washed out, a bit more bloaty. Sigma, uh, the Nikon one is more defined. But again, if you look at the corners, you see by f4, there's virtually no coma whatsoever on the Nikon. Whereas the Sigma, look at this particular star here, is still a bit bloaty. You can still start to see the, the small wings on each side of it. And again, this, the Nikon has much sharper stars at the corners. Uh, if you look at the Sigma, again, slightly more elongated, slightly more bloaty. It's quite a, this is quite surprising to be honest. I guess the I expected the Sigma to be sharp throughout the range, um, throughout the entire frame itself. Whereas the Nikon actually seems to be beating it in in that particular aspect. Um, Nikon itself, yeah, I'm, I'm very impressed by the corner sharpness of it. Uh, I do like the colors, I do like the contrast, the image, um, but overall, the Sigma produces much brighter images, which is exactly what we want for um, astrophotography. And I mean, I'll, I'll put it due to the massive front element, you get less vignetting and Overall, you know, it's got more elements in there. It's going to be better corrected. Uh, but the truth is, any of these lenses will do the job. I've used both lenses already uh, for some astro images, and I'm happy with the results of both. It's all much of a muchness when it comes to these kind of pixel peeping. It's, astrophotography is all about being out there in the elements, taking the photos and just capturing what you see out there. It's just, we can do lens comparisons all the time, we can do a pixel peeping, but unless you go out there, take the shots, you'll never improve. So anyway, I hope you like this quick comparison between the two lenses and this is PN from Extraordinary Imaging, signing off.